Welcome to part 8 of the DA50RG aircraft design using Katia V5. We are now finishing up on the fuselage and we're just going to dive right in. So this is the two parts that we created earlier. If you haven't watched the other episodes, kindly go back and watch them so that we can continue together. Now, what we're going to do, the first thing I'm going to do is to hide this access system because I don't need it. We don't need it for this part, that is. All right. And then we are going to show two of the points that we had created earlier. Remember, we had an intersection point here. So what you can do, you can double click on hide show. You can hide and show multiple elements. So we're just going to show that point. That was the first point. And then you can randomly show in and hide the other points until you get this point right here. And then go back and click again, hide and show and you you will have unselected it now what we need to do contrary to what we were doing in the other seg segments where we only had a few coupling curves or guide curves for this section because we are moving from one different geometry which is kind of like a rounded rectangular shape to an elliptical shape and we want these surfaces to be as smooth as possible and we want also to achieve smooth tangency continuation uh, at the sides because uh, that's where the air is flowing towards so we're going to make sure we add at least a balanced number of splines we don't want to have too few but we also don't want to overdo it and put too many splines where our geometry is complex and it's not um it's not well defined so the first thing you're going to do is to create some points on this boundary curve and we're going to do that using a tool called point repetition. You can go to insert, select wireframe and here you'll find points repetition or you can go to advanced replication tools and you're also going to find points repetition. So select your first point. I already have mine set up right here so I'm going to select point repetition and then this is the curve we are referring to then the instances at this point we are going to select number 15 preview and you should have something like this it doesn't mean that if you use a less or more points it's going to be different it's just uh, it's going to be wrong. It's just going to be a little different. And I just found my ultimate number of points that I need to use. And that is 15. Select OK. We're going to repeat the same for the other side. So select point and then point repetition. This is a curve sketch. And instances is 15 and then preview and select OK. Now for the first upper half, when I say the first upper half, I mean from this point, this section up to here, connecting to this, we're going to make those splines tangent to this curve. The tension is going to be different, but they are going to be uh, with reference to this curve. And then the bottom half from this point up to this point, we are going to make the splines tangency direction in reference to this curve right here. And then the sides, we are going to use, if I hover over the surface, you can see these edges that are being highlighted. And we're going to use those lines so that we can have smooth transition into the new surface that we are creating. So let's go, uh, go ahead and continue. Make sure you can clearly see your, your geometry, the color that you have. And also try to rotate your object such that every time you're connecting two points, they are completely visible. It's very easy for you to confuse between two points, especially once you start making many curves. So uh, keep that in mind as you continue. So we're going to select spline. This is our first point and it is tangent to this curve. Make sure the direction is facing where the spline is going. And then select the second point and also make it tangent to that curve. And then select OK. Repeat the same for the other side. We're going to just, once we make one on this side, we make the other one on the other side. So that we can keep them uniform and we don't confuse. Select spline. Again, this is the first point tangent to this curve. 
x direction this is the second point and it is also tangent to this curve as you can see here change the direction as well i think we also made a mistake here the last point the direction should always be facing where the spline is going okay all right now let's go to the other uh, the other curve now something to note here when you get to the corner here we're just going to leave we're going to leave it to flow uh, where the computer is going to generate so we are not going to associate it with this point uh, right here so we're going to select spline and then select this point then we leave it and then we go to the second point and we make it tangent to that curve so we need this to flow uh, freely to to distribute the surface freely and select ok let's repeat the same to the other side so select spline select this point and then rotate the geometry this is the second point and it is tangent to that curve and select ok all right now we are at the fourth point select spline this is the fourth point and now if you hover over the geometry you can see this edge right here and we're going to make that tangency direction with reference to that uh, edge and then make sure the direction is facing the x direction and then this is the second point and once again it is tangent to that curve then select OK. Repeat the same on the other side. So we have spline. First point, you hover over the geometry and find this curve. Alternatively, you can always go back to shading with edges and you'll be able to select it mo with more ease. But uh, I'm choosing this for visibility. And then X direction. Then the second point, which is tangent to that curve, and select OK. All right. Now let's go to the bottom side. I'm just going to find a spot that is best for me. All right, let's start here. So select spline. Now remember the bottom side we are defining the tangency direction with reference to this curve so this is our first point and then it is tangent to this to this curve sorry and then this is the second point again tangent to that curve select ok then do it on the other side select this point tangent to that curve and second point once again tangent to that curve select ok this point tangent to this curve but we're going to reduce the tangency uh, tension and then it's connecting to this point right here which is also tangent to this curve so let's go back to point one and reduce the tension to around point two preview and select ok do the same to the other side Select spline, tangent to this curve. We can just reduce the tension right here, point two, and then next is this point, tangent to this curve, and select OK. Right. Now we have these two points on this side and the other one as well. So select spline. Point one. And it is tangent to this line, this edge. 
make sure it's facing that direction and then join with this curve and the point 2 is also tangent to this curve select ok last one here we have spline first point you can hover and find the other curve the, you can use the upper one or the lower one we're going to use the upper one change the direction this and then this middle point we're going to make it tangent with the upper curve like so select ok let's do the same in the lower uh, in the other side select spline the bottom one starting point is here we find this tangency curve facing the x direction this is the second point and tangent to the lower curve select ok then the upper one first point tangents to this curve up here sorry let's repeat that uh, second point tangent to the curve above here facing the x direction then this is the second point and we make it tangent with the upper curve and select ok so if you have followed closely we have now finished all all the curves we can always edit them back later once we create our surface for example there is this curve right here and i'm thinking we should have reduced the tension by Let's go ahead and create our multi-section surface. So go to surfaces, select multi-section surface. And this is our first curve. The closing point, we are going to make it, uh, we are going to make sure the closing point is at the middle point so that they are all uniform. But let's first select the second curve. So you can see the closing points are different points. If you try to join them like this, you're going to get a very deformed surface. So we want to make sure that our closing points, right click and select replace and select this point. And make sure the direction it's facing, the other one will also be facing the same direction. So hover over the other closing point, right click, select replace and select the first the first point this point make sure it's facing the same direction and then we can now add the guides so come to guides you can select the first curve and then start selecting the splines from here or if you're good you can continue selecting them the best way to do that is to select close to the uh, to the end so you can see which one you're selecting so let's go ahead and start selecting all the splines Just carefully select all of them all the way around okay so recap make sure you've selected the two curves then make sure the closing points are all at the same point so that's why we put them at the, our initial points and then they are all facing the tangency direction for the closing points is the same and then you've selected all the guides you can check here and see you selected all these splines plus the initial join curve we had here you can always find it this join curve and this sketch curve so uh, sorry and this join these two join curves now select preview and select ok i'm going to make this surface the same I'm going to give it the same material because that way you can see 
a boundary where tangencies are not similar apply uh, apply material select okay and this is the geometry we've created so actually it looks good you can go to tools hide all curves tools hide all points and also hide this sketch and now this is the surface we've created as i said we were trying to make this part as smooth as possible the transition between this part uh, obviously here we were going higher where we have the the windshield and the pilot's compartment so it's going up that's why we've gone up right there and then we've got the bottom surface here which kind of goes down the same the, we, we use the same curve the, as the one we had on the wing so it's going to blend in with the wing and i think uh that looks pretty decent you can try to check uh, the side view here and see if that matches the profile we had earlier on and i think we are right on track so we've now joined the two surfaces you can show the wing and we're actually going to change the material again let's paint it the same color and here is our aircraft so far we've created the wing this is why we reuse the same curve so at least we can have the body um, uh, slightly overlapping the wing i think so far so good in the next couple of episodes we are just going to create the vertical stabilizer the horizontal stabilizer right there and we're also going to create the propeller and i'm going to show you how you can move from this and create some uh, windows here for the aircraft to look as realistic as possible we are not going to be creating the landing gears we are only creating the housing because we are assuming this is an aircraft in flight and if you're doing static or fluid flow analysis definitely the landing gears are going to already be uh, inside the compartments so so far so good see you in the next episode uh, i hope you're enjoying the episode so far don't forget to like uh, comment and subscribe let me know in the comments uh, if there is any clarification that you need any opinion that you have on how i'm making the series uh, so see you in the next part